welcome to this webinar in which we'll introduce you to our interim remote invigilation solution for functional skills. I hope it'll give you a good overview of the solution and understand how to go about moving forwards with the solution if you feel it would help you and your learners. During the webinar, we'll cover the interim solution for remote invigilation. So we'll provide some background to the solution and explain how it works and also cover some of the key requirements, the expectations and instructions. We're also going to spend a couple of slides at the end just looking at our new remote test centres and how they work and how hopefully they'll be useful to you. So let's look at the background to the solution. So just as background, we've been offering a test at home solution for some of our vocational qualifications since April and have been looking at a solution for functional skills for some time now. You'll know functional skills has clear assessment conditions around it, so any solution we put in place needs to be extremely robust. So we began a pilot back in October um, to test learner centre and the technology experience, and we're about to move into phase two. We've just completed the upgrade of our reassessment platform, Evolve, and so are now confident that we can move into phase two with a slightly different model to the one that we had in phase one of the pilot, and we'll be using web delivery. We hope this will provide more flexibility and enable more learners to access the test. So let's take a look at how it works. From the illustration, you can see the candidate on the left and the invigilator on the right. The candidate needs a Windows laptop or PC with a forward facing camera and a second device such as a smartphone or a tablet, and that can be either Android or Apple. The invigilator working remotely will have a laptop or PC and access to secure assess in order to administer the exam. The invigilator and candidate will agree on the software they will use to invigilate the session. So there are three choices at the moment, GoToMeeting, WebEx or Teams. And we've put together candidate and invigilator guidance on how to use those platforms. So once agreed, the invigilator will send a meeting to the candidate for the date the test is booked on. And through the meeting software, the invigilator will be able to see the candidate through the front facing camera and also the learner's environment through the second device. As we'll be monitoring these live assessments taking place for quality assurance purposes, you'll see the exam auditor sitting in the bottom right of the illustration. So if we select a test for monitoring, the invigilator will be asked to share the meeting appointment with the exam auditor and they will join the session. And it's just important to note that the session must not be recorded by either the invigilator or the candidate. So just to summarise some of the key steps. So first of all, the centre receives approval to offer remote invigilation for functional skills from City and Guilds. Once that's in place and we've supported you to get up and running, you'll be able to book your functional skills exams as normal through the Ward Garden. The centre arranges an online meeting with either using either Teams or WebEx or GoToMeeting for the same date as the exam booking and the invigilator and the candidate share that meeting appointment and obviously make sure they're both OK with the agreed meeting um, software. The online uh, meeting appointment might need to be shared with City and Guilds on request for quality assurance purposes. So that's if we decide to audit that particular test. The invigilator will start the meeting with the candidate on the day of the test and run through the setup checks and all of the steps are documented in our detailed um, centre guide, which we'll talk about in a little while. The invigilator then shares the URL or the link to the test. Um, and they would also share the one time user key code and pin code and the candidate takes their test. To make things easier for the candidate and the invigilator, we've produced detailed guidance and checklists to help them step through the process. For the candidate, there are four stages and for the invigilator, there are five. So the steps are before the exam, at the start of the exam, during the exam, at the end of the exam and after the exam. And you'll see by looking across the two columns, they largely mirror each other. So we recommend a session before the exam 
just for the invigilator to check with the candidate on some key things. So firstly, that both have read and understood the instructions and the checklists. That the area the test is going to be taken in is clear and set up correctly. That both parties are clear about the declaration and what's required. And that the, the meeting software that's going to be used has been agreed and has been downloaded as necessary. Also, just a quick check on equipment generally and things around exam conditions. On the day of the exam and at the start of the exam, the invigilator needs to complete some environment and security checks with the candidate. They'll also check for things like um, any unauthorised equipment or any unauthorised resources or materials. They need to verify that the candidate is who they say they are, and we do that through authentication using photo ID. And then obviously before the exam starts, the invigilator will share the necessary link to the test and provide the access codes and PIN number, and then the candidate will be able to start the test. So during the test of the exam, the invigilator is to spend 100% of their time focusing on invigilation. So it's not possible for them to be carrying out any other activities during the exam. They need to be 100% focused. At the end of the exam, the candidate will confirm that they finished and the invigilator just needs to check that the final question has been uploaded into our system and has been marked as complete with a little green tick. After that, the invigilator will check with the candidate that the area is clear and any scrap paper has been properly destroyed and that both the candidate and the invigilator have completed their declarations, which, which really outline that they have followed the processes and instructions fully. After the exam, there's also a centre declaration, which would usually be completed by the exams officer or somebody in a similar role. Before getting up and running, there are some important documents and instructions that everybody must be familiar with. We've created four key documents, which all centre quality staff and invigilators must be familiar with, as they outline the instructions and processes which must be followed. The centre guide summarises the instructions for carrying out remote invigilation, but also incorporates the functional skills instructions for conducting exams using remote invigilation, as well as specific guidance for invigilators. There's a slimmer document for candidates, which explains to them what they need to do. In addition, there's a checklist, so one for the invigilator and another for the candidate, which takes them step by step through the process and also includes declarations which must be completed by both parties. The invigilators also contains a centre declaration which should be signed off by the exams officer or somebody in a similar role. And these documents will be made available to you if you wish to offer remote invigilation. We've also developed guidance to support with the conferencing software that you might wish to use. So again, for Teams, GoToMeetings and WebEx. We've explored a number of other conferencing software or platforms and we'll continue to do so, but for now, these are the three that we've decided to work with. And in addition, we're just providing here a reminder of the subject content and subject criteria documents for functional skills. We're conscious that many learners may have had breaks in learning. So ahead of booking any exams, just a reminder that learners do need to feel ready and be fully prepared for the exam and also have all the required equipment and materials available to them. The invigilator has a number of key responsibilities, exactly as they would have if they were invigilating the exam face to face. And it's their job to ensure the test is conducted securely and in line with the instructions. It's the head of centre's job to make sure invigilators are appropriately trained and are available and that they meet the requirements stated here. So the invigilator must supervise candidates throughout the test and give complete attention to this duty at all times. The invigilator must not carry out any other task while they're invigilating. All exams using this approach must be invigilated on a one-to-one -one basis. The same person can't invigilate more than one candidate at a time. And this is really important 
the tutor for the subject being examined must not be an invigilator for any exam and that's in line with the functional skills ICE document. And just a reminder, relatives, friends and or peers of the candidates must not be the invigilator for the exam. And for our remote invigilation, invigilators will need to be familiar with the Evolve Secure Assess platform and be able to administer tests. So for example, issuing key codes, pins and pausing the test if necessary. The centre guide also provides full detail on access arrangements. And as with all tests, they need to be agreed beforehand and invigilators need to be aware of them. Any extra time needs to be added to the Evolve exam when it's booked. And again, as with all Evolve exams, if any assistive technology is being used, candidates should practice using it ahead of the exam and use the navigation test to ensure it's compatible. We talked about the exam auditors a little earlier. Their job is to check centres and invigilators are following the instructions. So they will observe remotely invigilated exams in the same way as they would observe a face-to-face -face exam. City and Guilds will ask the centre to provide details of planned exams and they'll select which ones to audit. So in that case, we'll arrange for the appointment to be shared with the auditor. When the auditor identifies non-compliance, they'll feed this back to the centre along with any actions and timescales for the actions to be completed. And these will be followed up. And any serious instances of non-compliance will be reported to our internal teams for further investigation. And to support you with quality assurance, we've set up a new inbox, fsremote at cityandgirls.com. And this is for quality related queries only. So not general uh, queries around remote invigilation as they can be handled by our customer services team. And details of how to get in touch with them will be provided at the end of the presentation. So in the following slides, we'll go through at a very high level some of the most important instructions. Obviously, full detail of all of these um, are in the centre guide and you'll need to read that carefully. So just as a reminder, this solution is open to reading, writing and maths at level one and level two, both for legacy and reformed functional skills. The way our ICT test works means it's not currently possible to offer it with remote invigilation as learners are sometimes required to work offline on local PCs and laptops for some aspects. So it will be difficult for us to monitor. So there's a reminder again here of the key documents and also a link to support and user guides for users of Evolve, our reassessment platform. Candidates must complete exams under the same conditions as if there was an invigilator in the room with them. They must join the meeting and make sure the invigilator can see the exam environment and can confirm that they're taking the exam safely and securely. And also that they can see that they aren't receiving any help during the exam and that candidates are not using any unauthorised equipment or material. Invigilators should be trained to deliver remote invigilation and be familiar with Evolve and have an Evolve account that allows them to view key codes and exams um, that have been uploaded. So just a reminder again that the session must not be recorded. We talked earlier about the different stages of the process. We think a pre-meeting or discussion with the candidate ahead of the actual test is important. And at that meeting, you can check on equipment unauthorised materials and equipment, the layout of the exam area, and a reminder about not recording the test. It's important to follow the instructions in the centre guide, which provide information on scanning the environment fully, positioning the mobile device correctly, and checking the environment to ensure that any unauthorised equipment or materials have been removed from the room. The candidate also needs to be able to confirm that there will be no interruptions and be familiar with what to do in an emergency. The candidate needs to be able to bring some photo ID. So it's the centre's responsibility to make sure the person taking the test is the candidate. So the invigilator will need to verify this. Again, the centre guide provides more information on the types of photo ID that are suitable. Moving on to stage two, the start of the exam, these are things that need to take place just before the exam starts. 
So the candidate and invigilator join the meeting. They enable their webcams and microphones to do the pre-test checks and the candidate removes the watch and places it on the desk and the invigilator asks about any interruptions and covers exam conditions with the candidate. So then a check on the required materials and that any PC or laptop and additional device are working and plugged in. The candidate is reminded again of the exam conditions and the URL for the exam is shared. The candidate then launches the exam and confirms the details are correct. The key code is entered by the candidate and they check the exam and details are correct. And if so, enter the PIN and begin the exam. During the exam, the invigilator must be 100% focused on invigilating the exam and not carrying out any other activities. The exam session should not have breaks and be uninterrupted. The invigilator should be aware of how to manage any emergencies and technical issues and be familiar with guidance on malpractice. There are also some things invigilators must not do. So they must not read or rephrase or explain any questions to the candidate. They mustn't comment on a question or direct candidates to particular sections or questions. And they must not give candidates information or comment on possible mistakes in the exam unless specifically asked to do so by City and Guilds. And if an invigilator suspects there is a mistake or an error with the question, they should administer the exam as normal and report their concerns to City and Guilds as soon as possible. Additionally, the invigilator should turn off their camera and microphone during the exam, but the candidates must remain on so that the invigilator can supervise them during the exam. Finally, at the end of the exam, and once the candidate has confirmed they've finished, the invigilator needs to ensure the exam has been marked as complete in the Secure Assess system. If not, there are processes in place to provide support. Our customer services team are ready to support with remote invigilation and we ask you to flag up in any email or on the phone that your query relates to remote invigilation so that they can deal with it quickly for you. And finally, at the end of the exam, we need to ensure the candidate and the invigilator checklists are complete, ensure the candidate and the invigilator declarations are complete, and that the centre declaration is complete and these must be stored by the centre for six months. Hopefully that gives you a feel for how remote invigilation works as well as an understanding at a high level of the controls and instructions around it. So what next? If you haven't already please try to join a live introductory session. It'll be a bit like the one you've just watched but with an opportunity to ask questions. If you'd like to go ahead, you'll need to apply for approval and you can find out more about that from the link in this slide or from the COVID pages on the City and Guilds website. Once approved, we'll talk you through the next steps, help you get up and running and give you a start date. So you must apply to use remote invigilation for the functional skills qualifications that you are approved to deliver and you will be approved subject to meeting our technical and quality assurance requirements. No exams can be sat and be remotely invigilated until you have approval to do that. So there is an expression of interest form which you can complete and that will be reviewed by our quality delivery team. If you are approved, we'll inform you in writing, we'll add you to our register of approved remote invigilation centres and we'll give you a start date. We'll also contact you ahead of that to explain the booking process. Just a note um, that we, when we're reviewing your expression of interest, it may be that we need to talk to you a little bit more about your quality status before approving your, improving you for remote invigilation. And during that call, we'll confirm any further actions needed um, and that you might need to complete before approval. So in terms of supporting you, our customer services teams have all been trained and are ready to support with invigilation. So you can contact them by phone or by email, centre support at cityandguilds.com. And as we said earlier, it's useful to flag up your query or mention on the phone that it's in relation to remote invigilation so that we can help you quickly. 
In terms of quality delivery, we now have a new inbox FS remote at cityandgills.com and your emails can go there if they specifically relate to quality issues around remote invigilation. So let's have a look at functional skills test centres. This is where City and Guilds has started to offer both paper and on-screen tests for functional skills at level one and level two at its own offices. So how will our test centres work? Well, we've decided to open up our own offices to provide additional opportunities for your learners to take their functional skills tests. And we'll be offering tests on paper and on screen at level one and level two for reading, writing, maths and ICT. We've decided on three locations to start with, and that's London, Birmingham and Bristol. And that's based on the information you've been sending us about when and where you're planning your tests and the sort of volumes you think you're going to have. So tests will really be booked in the usual way, but with an additional step of booking a seat or a place for your learners at those venues for a particular time. And we've also got an agreement with National Express to help our learners taking their functional skills tests as part of this project to have a help, bit of help with their travel. So we will provide the environment COVID safe with invigilators and equipment. So learners just need to take up and be ready to take their test. There'll be a fee of £25 and that's in addition to the exam fee to help us cover our costs. And we believe we have the capacity to offer about 100 tests a day across those three planned locations. So we'll keep an eye on take up and the information you keep sending us about your assessment plans to see if we need to expand and where. So please complete that questionnaire so that we can have a really clear understanding of your plans and where else we might want to consider opening up additional test centres. If you need any more information on this service or would like to book a test, we've opened a new inbox and that's fsexamsservice at cityandguilds.com. So the inbox is there and the team behind it are waiting to support you and take your bookings. So just a reminder also that the Department for Education has an exam support service and the service has recently been extended to provide additional support to apprenticeship training providers needing additional space or invigilation to deliver functional skills exams. To find out more about the eligibility criteria and how to use this service, you can go on the Department for Education's website and look up exam support service or follow the red link. So just to say many thanks for your attention and I hope this has been a useful introduction to the additional services we're introducing to support functional skills and we truly do hope they will help. Thank you.